was so at first I was kind of lagging getting out of the house this morning. So it's, it's 1130. I uh, normally try to get out on the road at least by nine o'clock in the morning, but because you know it's that time of the year where nine thirty it's already like a hundred degrees here where I live. But you know, I also have a dog and she deserves to go out, get nice walks when it's not hot, so I felt it was more important to get her out getting a walk before I went out for a ride. But anyway, welcome to the channel. Appreciate you coming by. Spending the next 20 minutes or so with yours truly. So today I'm actually on a ride uh, around Castaic Lake, which you're not going to see on this episode. But I wanted to use this as an opportunity. I'll go ahead and pass this lady. She doesn't seem to want me behind her. The episode you're about to watch is actually my trip with Mom's Greetings. A few weeks ago, my mom was in town. And when my mom's in town, she stays with me. And um, we usually just hang out together and do nothing, a whole lot of nothing. I had been thinking a lot lately about taking a long trip on the bike. You know, my, my average ride is barely over an hour. Uh, my ride to work is about 55 miles. Like I said, about an hour. Every once in a while, it'll be a little bit longer if I'm if I'm lane splitting and having to slow down through trips through gridlock traffic. But for the most part, my average ride is up just about an hour. And I know that you can't just ride an hour two or three times a week and then expect to get on your bike for a, you know a freaking cross country trip. So I wanted to take like a an exploratory trip, somewhere semi-close, that uh, I can kind of test my limits, kind of see how long I can sit on the bike for, and, and kind of get an idea what kind of a range I can uh, plan my, my, my trip within, you know? I figured the week that my mom was in town was the perfect opportunity for me to split out, have her hang out with Kaya for a day, uh, and, and let me just go ride the motorcycle. And so thankfully my mom was like, yeah, I have no plans. That sounds like a really cool idea. Why don't you go have fun? I'll stay with the baby. And yeah, everything should be fine. Um, I booked a hotel room in uh, Palm Springs and I went. Uh, and, uh, and so that's the video you're going to watch right now is going to be my Palm Springs trip. So appreciate you uh, coming, hanging out with me today. And I hope you enjoy the video. Okay. My father, rest his soul, would always say contact when we would leave on a long trip. It's what pilots would say before starting a prop-driven plane. I left Green Valley right around noon. I took Elizabeth Lake Road through Leona Valley. I was on the freeway briefly, and as I was getting off the off-ramp for Pear Blossom Highway, I heard this guy approaching me from somewhere. I decided to exploit this opportunity. It did not occur to me at the time that I would be catching up to this officer here real soon. So this is obviously the emergency our CHP was heading towards.
And let me tell you, the folks in this traffic jam did not make lane splitting easy for me at all. finally get to the front of this mess, and it does not look like we're going to be moving anytime soon. So I might as well shut down and take a break. Psych! Just about as soon as I shut down, the CHP up ahead signaled that we were going to be moving. So I got my gear back on and got ready to head back out. No worries, sir. Thank you. Palm Springs! Palm Springs? Yes, sir. Okay. A little bit to go. Live out there or just having a... No, I'm in Green Valley. Okay. The weather was nice and I figured it's a good time to go. How long have you been stuck right here? I literally just got here. Okay, cool. I, I, I lane split right up here and then... <laughs> <laughs> good, good day to ride. Yeah, right. Sadly, just as he says it's a good day to ride, this poor unfortunate person is being hauled off in the land. Thank you, sir. Stay safe out there, sir. I truly hope the people involved in this unfortunate incident are okay.
lineup on the opposite side of the highway was backed up about twice as far as it was going that direction. The rest of the ride up the mountain was pretty uneventful. Unless you count this doo-doo in the truck that decided to hose everyone at the top of the hill by chewing up the passing line. He got the thumbs down. And this is where my cameras all finally died. Which worked out, because I was only able to make it to Redlands before I was forced off the highway to take a break. I've had two back surgeries, so sitting upright without a backrest gets incredibly uncomfortable really fast. This was two hours plus into the ride, counting the time I was held up behind the crash. So I feel like this is a moderate success, since that's close to my refuel interval anyway. I only had about 30 to 40 minutes left in the trip, so I only needed a good 15 minutes to switch out batteries and sit under a shade tree for a bit to give my back a break. The 360 camera was in the pannier charging, so until I get closer to Palm Springs, I would have to settle for the GoPros.
It started getting really windy by the time I got to the Morongo Indian Reservation, so I decided to get over and slow down. I suppose that's why all these wind turbines are out here? Perhaps? I got off the highway, and I wanted to rip off really fast to get the 360 out, as I was expecting the battery to be charged by now. Next stop, Palm Springs. Toyed with the idea of taking the tram to the top, but opted for a massage in my hotel instead. The hotel let me check in a couple hours early. The room was pretty basic, but I had a massage scheduled in the spa, and that's all I cared about. Having a room next to this parking lot turned out to be a huge problem in the middle of the night. More about that later. One of the highlights of the trip was hands down this knitting group that was knitting in the hotel lobby. They legit gave me life. Bill's Pizza was also pretty bomb. After my massage, I came across the street for dinner. In retrospect, I should have gotten the personal and not the large. This dog was also very cute. Just maybe don't eat any bits you might drop on the table if you dine in. My massage was amazing, but I did not get a lot of sleep due to the myriad of delivery trucks that kept me up throughout the night. So I got up early, took a shower, and didn't even wait for my hair to dry before getting back on the bike and heading home.
It was pretty much rinse and repeat for the ride home, except I decided to pull off at Highway 2 to have lunch in Wrightwood. Brightwood is super chill. I used to snowboard here a lot when I was a kid. I had a pastrami Reuben at Wrightwood Brew Company. It was delicious. And then I just headed back the way I came home. I could have taken Highway 2 back, but I was just not in the mood for a new ride through unfamiliar twisties. I plan on making another trip here in the near future, but in a group ride scenario where we can come in on Highway 2. And so you can be sure not to miss that episode, maybe you should just go ahead and hit the subscribe button while you're here. The ride down the mountain was uneventful, with the exception of my GPS taking me a cool new way that bypassed the freeway, and it took me on this road that skirted the bottom of the mountain avoiding city congestion. This route got me home really fast, it was just such a pleasant alternative to riding more freeway. Without a doubt, my first long trip was a success. I figured out my optimal distance I can travel before I need a break, and I'm pretty confident I will be able to make a trip up north this summer to visit my favorite spot on Earth. I cannot wait to share that experience with you all. In the meantime, thanks for hanging out with me today. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and like always, ride safe.